Hi guys, Raif Darazi here, and I'm excited for this interview today with Josh Hips, my good friend who is in the Air Force, and he's going to be updating us on the pending uh, case in the military regarding people who are living with HIV, as well as some um, positive advancements that we've made regarding HIV medication and care within the military. Stick around. Josh, it's been a minute. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you so much for joining me today um, to talk about this exciting news. Yeah. Tell me, what are your pronouns to start? Uh, he, him, they, them. Perfect. Okay, tell us your relation to the military, and then tell us your relation to HIV. Um, so I'm an officer in the Air Force. Um, I'm a logistics officer. I'm a first lieutenant. I have been in the Air Force on May 23rd of this year, 2020. Uh, one will be three um, years since I have been active duty. Um, I was diagnosed with HIV on December the 7th of 2018 um, and since then I've been living my life and uh, just following along as the court case goes through the the district of uh, Eastern Virginia. So and what was that court case that was um, being handled? Um, so it's kind of a multifaceted court case but long story short the Air Force was trying to yeah. at the core kick people out um, if they were diagnosed uh, with HIV after being in the military. Um, that was the biggest one which that changed in 2017 after the Trump administration took office. Um, and then, of course, the other issue is the accessions, where basically where you um, are going from like ROTC or the Air Force Academy, West Point, um, or any of the service academies, but specifically the Air Force Academy and the Naval Academy, um, to, to commission as an officer from there. And then also due to entry requirements barring HIV, positive individuals from joining. Um, enlisted members are not allowed to go through officer training uh, so that they can commission as well. So that's in summation kind of what the court case was hinging on. Um, and so what is the latest development that you found out? So as you know, last time we talked, um, they had done an injunction back in February of 2019. Um, then they were supposed to hear the merits of the What case. does that mean, the injunction? Uh, so that, that means that um, the Air Force was not allowed legally because of the court's decision to kick people out. So that was kind of a win. Okay. Um, basically, okay. Judge Brinkema, the presiding judge on the case in the Eastern District of Virginia, stated that she felt that um, she, grant, or she wanted to grant emergency relief so that those of us pending potential... Uh, being kicked out wouldn't get kicked out until the merits of the course were heard um we were supposed to hear the merits of that court case that following september uh, but due to the government appealing the injunction to the circuit court um, that was actually heard in september of 2019 um, specifically on september the 18th of 2019 and then of course the decision came out at the end of december of 2019 january 2020 that in a unanimous three decision, uh, two Obama appointees, one Trump appointee, all unanimously decided that the injunction was, in fact, the proper thing to do. Um, and then in September of last year, September of 2020, um, Judge Brinkema actually heard the oral arguments. Um, and at this point, we are still waiting on her decision um, whenever that is, is going to come out. It's been a long, long process. Um, I can tell you yeah. that we, we, we all feel very comfortable. We all feel uh, very uh, good with what the potential outcome will be, especially considering mm -hmm. that uh, Joe Biden and um, Kamala want to make changes. That was one of their things going through the primary and then up to the general. Lambda Legal actually sent an interview survey out to all the Democratic nominees, asking them certain questions that were related to HIV care. Uh, and one of those things mm -hmm. was HIV within the military. And Joe Biden, Kamala Harris stated that uh, both of them were willing to make changes and repealing certain policies within the military that affected um, HIV members negatively. Um, some good news that we did see yeah. yesterday is, as we spoke last time, once you were diagnosed in the Air Force with HIV, you were required to go to SAMC, the San Antonio Military Medical Center in San Antonio, for a week for your initial visit. Then you do a six-month follow-up, and then you go on an annual visit. 
um, COVID changed that. We just did everything virtually. Um, and yesterday it came, the decision came down. Um, the policy changed that we no longer need to do the annual visit anymore, that just doing your blood work with your primary doctor and scheduling your one, oh, great. Uh, once a year annual telehealth appointment with someone at San Antonio um, will be good enough. So that's, Amazing. that's kind of some nice movement on the issue. Saves you all the travel. Um, one of the other policy things that we're waiting to hear from is uh, the last thing has been in the works for a while. So when you're diagnosed in the Air Force, um, one of the it is the only only thing that you're diagnosed with um, specifically due to readiness. It is an it is an outdated policy um, that when you are diagnosed, your squadron commander, um, so someone who could potentially be echelons above you in rank. Um, in my case, you know she's only several. The, my commander at that point was only several ranks higher than I but still, nonetheless, she's a squadron commander, so he or she has to be there with you so that they can issue what's known as a commander's order, um, which basically states that you understand that if you, you know, come into contact with the EMS personnel, um, that if you have any sexual partners, like, they all must be made aware that you have HIV. It doesn't matter. So you have to disclose to every single sexual partner. Wow. Correct. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Oh, if I did not, or not know that. So... It unfortunately resides wow. off a, 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 you know, at this point, two decades long stigma that needs to change. They've Archaic, been working on, yeah. They've been working on changing that. Um, I can tell you that Colonel Okulich, the the colonel who's been working this care and who is the mastermind behind getting, he's the, the the doctor, a military doctor who is the mastermind of getting behind, getting the whole world behind starting treatment as soon as possible rather than waiting for treatment mm -hmm. or your your levels to get below to a certain point so he's just incredible he's he's the yeah you know i, I don't want to say this you know i say this carefully but he's kind of like the dr fauci uh, with within the military when it comes to just revolutionizing yeah. and and yeah. being i remember you talking him. about him the last time that we did an interview on this which was years ago so um, he's been working also on policy yeah, recently I um, I did a doctor's vi visit vlog where we talked about the new drugs that are long-lasting injectables, and you mentioned yeah. something about that too related to the military. Share that. Um, yeah, so you know, uh, when it comes to the military, specifically Tricare, um, which is our health coverage, um, okay, they take a while to kind of get started um, in approving medication. So Victardi was approved by the FDA in February, I believe, of 2018. Um, the military did not actually approve it to be used until like sometime like September or October of that same year. We know that the FDA has recently approved the Keptegravir for being long lasting. Um, mm -hmm. It's currently working its way through the process. I did get a little more information from my doctor. Basically, you have to take two pills a day for 30 days to see that your body can handle it. Um, gotcha. It's the same medication that is the long lasting, but it's a, it's how, how can your body handle it? How does your body um, mm -hmm. react? Are there any negative, negative side effects? And if so, then, you know, you should be, probably should not be on Protegra Yeah. But it's just this, so that's kind of the process that's going to get started. It'll probably start up here okay. in the next several months. Um, what are you taking now, if you don't mind sharing? I'm still on Big Tarby. Okay, me too. But having so, the way that military healthcare works, if you're not in a large medical center, or within a large, or within a certain radius of a large medical center, then you'll get a referral off base. And so I live in Philadelphia um, because I'm stationed at Joint Base McGuire in South Jersey. Um, the I my infectious disease doctor is actually at Thomas Jefferson um, there in Center City, just a just a few blocks from where I live. So um, he, he said that as soon as the Veterans Affairs and the military tracker system approves its use, then we'll, we'll get that conversation going. Well, that's exciting stuff. Um, I'm glad to hear that there's some progress, even though it's slow, slow yeah. moving. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, do you mind coming back again whenever there's more updates? I'd love to have you on, and I'm sure that my viewers will benefit from hearing what yeah, you have to say. Yeah, most, most definitely. Yeah.
Okay, great. Guys, thank you so much for watching. It is my intention to continue to do interviews such as this one. So if you found it beneficial, if you enjoyed it, please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already, and please share this channel and or this video with your friends, loved ones, if you think it might be beneficial to them. All right, I'll see you soon. Cheers. Oh,